one foot flipper. See, that's, that's one foot flippers nonsense video. But... Hey, Paige here, the one foot flipper. How's it going? Not bad here. It's Sunday afternoon and somebody on the face on a Facebook group just pointed out that somebody was trying to sell uh, an autographed business card from Kevin Commonwealth Picker on eBay for $19.99. Now Kevin gives these away free to anybody who asks. I think I don't know, he might even put them in all his orders. I'm not exactly sure, but that got me thinking, what's the motivation for this? What's the kind of seller who would do this what kind of store would they have are they an expert ebayer who is utilizing kevin's name for free advertisement hoping people will search commonwealth picker and then click on that and then click through to their store instead or are they a 20 year season ebay veteran who has absolutely no idea what they're doing even after 20 years or are they something in between so I took a deep dive into this person's store. I'm not going to, I'm going to blur their name in this video and I'm never going to mention their name at all. We're just going to look, look at facts here. If you, if you want to go diving in to see who this person's name is, you can, that's all up to you. I'm not, but I'm not going to mention them by name. Only reason I'm mentioning Kevin by name is because otherwise nobody would understand what I was talking about at all. So this is a long time seller, as, as you can see here. Uh, they been around the block a few times. Uh, they currently have 3,508 items listed. Only 151 sold in the past three months though. Uh, that's a 70 month sell through rate, which is just under six years for those of you doing the math. That means when this seller, who we're just gonna call Timmy, when Timmy lists this Beavis and Butthead comic book, he's going to list it at a listing quality and a price that's going to make it take six years to sell. But it gets more interesting when you actually start diving into his store. Now, first thing I notice right off the bat is about 300 of his items are trading cards. You know... Trading cards, baseball cards, not just any baseball cards either. I mean, we're talking the prestigious 1991 baseball cards and not even tops either. We're talking the off brands. These are the same cards that I use as packing material. You know, if somebody buys a real card from me, you know, if they buy this guinea pig card from me, which is a card a human being would actually want, then Ray Young. Dante Bichette and another copy of Dante Bichette are going to go on either side of this guinea pig and then those are going to get slid together in this envelope into the sleeve for protection and that's going to get taped inside the envelope and mailed to the customer. I am at no point trying to sell Dante Bichette by himself and for all I know he's the greatest player in the world. I never heard of him before but I know there's basically no money in the 1991 series whatsoever. Literally, I throw away three of them every single order. I will, you know, rip them up on camera for fun. This is how valuable your 1991 baseball cards are. And this person uh, has hundreds of them in their store. And these cards are never going to have value. Notice, I didn't even look at those cards before I ripped them. I didn't check for rookies or nothing. Because the best I'd find is a $2 rookie that would take three years to sell. No thanks. More fun to rip it in half. These cards are never going to have value. There's going to be sealed cases of these cards still floating around in the inventory chain a hundred years from now. Literally, you go into any baseball card store that's been around for a while, they will have cases. They will have complete sets of these cards in the back, never opened by the dozen, and all selling around probably around 10 bucks. No, and at no point will interest in the 1991 baseball season ever increase. It will only decrease from now until the end of time. Uh, and it's, I, I wanted to calculate the sell-through rate on 1991 baseball card singles, but it's almost impossible because the number of, because the number listed is so high that it wigs out the eBay search and you don't keep, you don't get the same result every time you search for the number listed and the number of false hits on the sales outnumbers the number of actual sales so <coughs> i couldn't figure it out but i'm i'm sure that it's in decades 
Now, assuming one of these order sells at $1.50, this seller is going to clear 15 cents after fees, postage, and supplies. I'm basing this both off the eBay fee calculator for, for most of it, and then my real world knowledge of the cost of ship cards, such as the cost of the envelope, the cost of the the label that goes on the envelope, and the fact that almost every sports card seller I've ever seen uses stop loaders, which currently are available in bulk at 12 cents, or cheaper in ultra bulk, but this person doesn't have enough cards to buy them at that rate. Uh, they also have a large number of yearbooks. Now, all of them are priced exactly the same, $29.95 each. Doesn't matter if it's Harvard Medical Yearbook or Podunk High from last year. They're all $29.95. Now, that's not a terrible price point, honest, honestly. I think I do $24.99 on the few yearbooks that I have. <laughs> but they are undercharging on their shipping at $3.99. Most yearbooks weigh in at about three pounds, and few of them technically qualify for media mail, as most of them have ads, but I wouldn't expect a seller on this level to actually understand that part. And I bet these yearbooks have also been up for many years, and they never changed the shipping cost. In fact, one thing I have noticed in the seller store is that when prices on something is different, it's not because they were differentiating the price between a quality item and a different item. It's just that they came back to the same category later and it changed what price they decided everything was everything was worth, which I noted in a number of categories. Uh, next biggest part of their store is magazine advertisements. They have at least a thousand magazine advertisements. Good prices too. Most of them $14.95 each. Once again, basically everything's the same price. There seems to be a slight collection of them that are listed at $20 and a slight collection of $24.95. Those appear to simply be from separate listing times because there's no nothing differentiating them in quality or anything else from the ones that are $14.95. So everything is the same price. And you can tell a quality seller because quality sellers, they know their prices. They won't take any price information from anybody else they don't need to do any research they know that a cut out ad for a video game a pc game from 1997 that nobody ever played or heard of is worth 14.95 the exact same amount of money a pepsodent ad that is mostly text from 1968 is worth it's also worth 14.95 it must be because otherwise why would this seller list those items at that price Matter of fact, this section of their store looks like they just took a stack of magazines from the 1940s to the 1990s and they cut out every single ad and listed all of them, regardless of, of significance or lack thereof. All right, their next category they've got a ton of is 45s. You know, the little single records, you know, you got one song on one side, one song on the other. Popular with jukeboxes, DJs, and 60s teenagers who didn't have a lot of money. They've got hundreds and hundreds of 45s, and I can tell you something. They know what they got, and they know that every single one of them is worth $4.99 plus $4.99 shipping. Doesn't matter who the artist is, doesn't matter what the condition is, all of them are worth the exact same price, and all are listed for the exact same price. Every single one of them. Uh, just like... They also have relatively recent National Geographic magazines. Quite a few of them. And all of them are worth the same thing. They're all worth $4.95 plus shipping. If they weren't worth that, why would they be listed at that price? So they have to be worth that. Now here is the favorite section I have found in their store. It looks like they took a Garfield... Uh, it, I'm not sure if it was a book or a, a Garfield comic of the day calendar, but it looks like they cut up a Garfield book and listed every single page out of the book for $9.95 each. You know, not just one page, not two, you know, but I bet the whole book sells for $5 shipped if I could figure out what book it is. But yep, every single page, $9.95 each. And they must be worth that. Why would the person go to the trouble to spend 
probably a whole day of their life putting these up at $9.95 each and cutting the book up if they weren't worth that. Wouldn't make any sense. I mean, they've been on eBay forever, so they must know what they're doing, right? You'd think. Uh, is this thing on? Okay, one area of their store where I saw at least a little variation was on their hats. Yeah, this is gonna look worse because I didn't screen record this, but, or this could also just be from multiple listings, but their hats, looks like every hat is $13.24. Then, then hats go to being $15 each. Now, some of those $15 hats are $9.95 with $5 shipping. Others are $15 with free shipping, but either way, they know what they got, they know what a hat is worth, and a hat is worth $15. Period. Every hat is worth $15. Oh, discovered something. Unless it has a little rope on the front of it, in which case those hats are worth $20. So all hats without little ropes are worth $15, and all hats with little ropes are worth $20. Astounding a bit of information there. Be sure and write that down, put that on your Pinterest. You might want to get it tattooed on your forehead so when you look at the mirror every morning, you will know that hats with ropes are worth $20, hats without ropes are worth $15. Uh, they've got some video games listed too. Not their largest category. Uh, once again, though, say, huge sign of the same thing as the same price. Like, a huge percentage of their video games are listed for $5.09. And then some of them are just randomly listed higher. I don't know if they thought those were worth more or they were simply listing at different times when they had different numbers stuck in their head. Now, they didn't really do it on the video games, but in general, this person has ha has $14.95 stuck in their head as a price point all over all over their store, regardless of category, whatever they're in. They are loving $14.95 as a category. Oh, you just found another one. They've also got piano rolls. $19.95 each. Oh, and then randomly they double in price. So they're $19.95 each and then they're $37.95 each. Doesn't seem to be any uh, thing that I can tell to change between them. It's just at some point they decided, nah, these are worth more than $19.95. They've got to be worth $37.95. Must be. It's got to be. Why would they be listed at that price otherwise? Who knows? All right. I guess I am about done here. I guess the kind of person who would try to sell Kevin's business card for $20 is the kind of person who doesn't know what they're doing on eBay despite their level of experience. So if this store looks like yours, I'm sorry that you feel insulted, but maybe it's time to up your game, try a little bit harder, stop guessing prices, and get better so those sales will improve. You want things to sell through at more than six years, you know. Ideally, I mean, some, some people can have a one-month sell-through rate. I don't. Mine's closer to one year, but you could definitely do better than six years. You could definitely do better than wasting entire days listing garbage that will never sell, uh, such as 1991 baseball cards, uh, absolutely magazine ads that have no redeeming quality. Nobody wants a Pepsodent ad that is almost all text. I'm not sure anybody would even want a Pepsodent ad, much less an almost all text one. All right. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you have any friends who have stores full of Pepsodent ads, why don't you tell them about this channel so they can check this video out and be insulted. Hope to see you again soon.
and cutting the book up if they weren't worth that. Wouldn't make any sense. I mean, they've been on eBay forever, so they must know what they're doing, right? You'd think.